Trying to get himself in title contention. Krokop with the straight left. Both guys have great records all around. Hi guys, I'm Shaf, um, head coach and owner of RDX Cage Street Gyms. I'm here with my good friend, Christopher Alter, who graced us today uh, for, with a couple of sessions. Came in, helped out with the boxing class and the MMA class. Everything went smoothly, everyone loved it. Um, this guy has been at the top, has competed against the best. Uh, a truly humble guy. Uh, everyone here today, it's a pleasure to have him down here today. So, um, I mean, so, how long have you been training for now? Oh God, I, I, I started I start, 39 years, so 30, almost 40 years Almost 40 years. I've, been, I've been training non-stop. They said to me, oh you'll give up when you when you go to university, you didn't stop. you'll give up when you get married, you didn't stop. you'll give up when you start work, you didn't stop until it became my work. Yeah, and then it became natural. Yeah, you. exactly, so you know, I love martial arts. Um, is there anything, any discipline in particular or? I do like the grappling element, I like the jiu-jitsu side of it, I love it. Yeah. I love the jiu-jitsu side of it, boxing, I love it all, the boxing side. No, I do like the black thing, so... So, uh, can you remember what yeah. did initially get you into martial arts? Yeah. 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 Long way back. I'm, I'm a child of the 70s, so yeah. Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee was the man. Yeah. So, watching Bruce Lee, watching the old Kung Fu flicks, sort of got me into martial arts. Like at seven years old, karate, then I progressed on to Wushu, Wing Chun, Aikido. Kickboxing, boxing, yeah, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, yeah, everything. everything. Forty years—that's a lot of knowledge. A long time, a long time, and I'm still, I'm still, still learning. Still learning. I'm, st you know, I you always got, are. I just yeah, got back from Thailand, and I was a complete beginner, complete beginner, a complete beginner. You know, some of the stuff they've got out—it's a Boran, the Moy Boran was where it's at out there. I thought it was very, very good. It's very different. I thought. I thought there's a few good secrets there. Oh, my, my head, uh, Muay Thai coach uh, is from that background. Okay. Uh, uh, Murphy, yeah. Okay. Um, it's from a Boran background. Yeah, yeah, that's it, and uh, he loves doing that. Mm. Um, so, um, what, uh, what would you say? Um, uh, what, who, who would you say was probably the inspired you the most? Would you say Bruce Lee. <laughs> Bruce Lee. Uh, and what Bruce about Lee. Who, 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 who's your favorite fighter? Oh now, gosh! What do you say? Or, or, or recent times? Gosh, I, I, it's quite a few. Isn't yeah, it? there's so many. Yeah. So it depends what weight. It depends, you know, it depends what I'm looking at. It depends what fight. There's so many. I mean, the sport has evolved non-end. It really has evolved non-end. You know, <coughs> whereas before it was like you know, it was a bit sort of. It was, you know, kind of. The, the, there was there was a difference between strikers and grapplers, and was, now it's become more well-rounded. People, have, you know, especially with the young kids, yeah. these talented young kids are coming along, and they get it. They understand it. You know? how, how do you feel about how mixed martial arts in the UK is developing now, and where it's going now? How it's heading? I mean, I think it's developing real well. I mean, we've got great heritage when it comes down to boxing. I think it's developing real well. We've got something to say here in the UK. We're a small island, yeah, but we still, we still got good top level fighters going abroad. Yeah. And what, 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 what's our population here? Seventy million compared to the US, four hundred and four hundred and fifty million. So boxing, we run things. We run things in boxing. Yes. We run it. How do you feel about the facilities we've got here? How do you feel oh, these facilities like this will help? Wonderful you? facilities, man. You got proper cage, plenty of mat space, plenty of bags. You've got a weight section at the back. Yeah, you can't fault it. Yeah. Can't fault it. One of the best best gyms that I've seen for, for MMA and martial arts. It is what, the best one that I've seen. That's great to hear. Um, yeah, um, the, the ring, the weights, the cardio equipment. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. Just trying to give. We're trying to give better access. Uh, the gym is open 24 7. Uh, we're trying to give right. better access, uh, right. better facilities, and uh, more classes for, for everyone. You know, right. how, how many, the amount of future superstars that are out there among <laughs> us, the youngsters, the kids that but they haven't got access or, or prices are too high. Um, you know, we're just trying to help out as much as we can. That's, that's what I do. I mean, a, a lot of the kids that I, that, that I coach back in. Um, Back in London, I, you know, I, I don't charge them, especially if they haven't got any money. I don't charge them. I make it, you know, for me, that's that's a way of giving back, and calm will come looking for me one day. So, you know, I love to give. You know, I love to, I love it to give because I know it's not forgotten. You know, what I mean, it's amazing, amazing, amazing. But 
we probably had about 100 people here throughout the night mm -hmm. uh, over a couple of hours and um, all eyes were on you mm -hmm. uh, the people in the sessions there was a few people outside having their own little workouts but they were all watching and listening as well and uh, they enjoyed it yeah they enjoyed glad, it every I'm minute glad. of it you always worry you always think oh, yeah yeah sometimes i can be quite strict yeah especially when it comes down to the cardio because i've seen it so much yeah people just get tired and they flake out and it's the worst feeling when your cardio goes so I'm, I'm quite strict when it comes down to the cardio. Absolutely, yeah. fight conditioning, fight yeah. strength, fight fitness is That's key. It. That's it. The most important factor That's of it. it. So what would traditionally be uh, your morning routine, uh, a workout for you? Okay, it all depends. Usually I'd, try, I'd want to train twice a day, five days a week. But in reality, especially being an older athlete, especially if, if I had sparring, I'd have to maybe miss one session. So I'd usually train twice a day. Maybe I'd get up in the morning and I'd go and do an, my MMA class as usual. And then in the evenings, I'd do a cardio or I'm doing a weight session, depending on what I've got on, or I'm doing sort, sort of, you know, a core run. So I'd mix it really with sparring, sessions, um, boxing, cardio, weight training, it'll, be, it'll, it'll all be mixed up. But I usually have about three solid sparring sessions a week, like sparring like an animal, like you go in adrenalized, you think who's here? Oh my God, James is in, oh my God, that, that guy's in, oh my God, this guy, I, 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 I took it to him last time, he wants his own back. So it was, it was for your life at sparring, yeah. it really was. I'm not 100% for that, but it did, it, it helped me, it helped me big time. So, um, yeah, you've competed at the top, against the top, against the best, um, Crow Corp in particular as well. Um, very, uh, I rewatched that fight the other night, uh, very unlucky stoppage as well, to be fair, in the fit. The eye punch. Yeah, the eye punch, it was... Uh, Mine still isn't the same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. I mean, initially, you can't tell what happened to them, and they replay mm -hmm. it, and you see, and it's like, oh, mm -hmm. that's so harsh. Um, uh, you know, it was a great fight up until then. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, he's considered one of the greats. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was it like going in, at, fighting at, on the biggest stage? Do you know UFC, my mentality? Do you know, do you know my mentality? You know, Chef is, he's a man. I bet I know what he does in the morning when he gets up. He gets up. He washes his teeth and he has a piss. <laughs> Same as everyone else. So at the end of the day, I don't, I don't really, I, don't, I really don't yeah. hold airs nor graces to anyone. Yes. I really don't. So you know, if you're polite to me, I'll be polite to you. If you're yeah. rude to me, I'll be rude to you. I don't really look at someone and think, oh my god. Yeah. You know, no matter who they are, yeah. no matter who they are. So you know, uh, for you, know, you just another day at the office. Just another guy. Yeah. I'm not going to have no air. Oh, of course I was scared. Yeah. If you're not scared, you shouldn't be in that yeah, ring. Of course you're going to be. You shouldn't be yeah. fighting. Yeah. You shouldn't if you're. Need those you see, 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 some guys just say, oh, "I'm not scared." You shouldn't be in the. There's something wrong with you. Then you shouldn't be in the ring or the cage. Go away. So I'm not scared. You should be scared. Yeah. So, but it was, it was a great experience. Yeah. Um, training, having a date in your head, and working towards that date. You know, it was a great experience. Now I'm watching the young, and they're doing they're doing really well, and I'm loving being being, being part of it. I love martial arts. Mm. You know how it is. Yeah, you're a true martial artist, yeah. isn't it? That's yeah. how it should be. Yeah. Um, are there? Uh, uh, what, what about food? Diet. Uh, oh God, is there, so is, important. Yeah. So important. All I can say, I can sit here for two hours talking yeah. about food and diet. Um, keep it simple. Keep it raw as possible. Raw salads. Uh, if you're gonna have, if if you're gonna have uh, meats, fish. Um, you know, just keep it basic as possible. Keep it as basic and as raw as possible. You'll be too, too far gone. Too far wrong, so okay. uh, yeah, that's great. And just a balance, a balance, yeah, yeah. A balance. You know, between you know your carbohydrates, you know your, your proteins, you know, green vegetables, so important. Yeah, so important. Eat, really, really important. Eat your greens and organic. <coughs> Look, if you're gonna eat anything organic, eat your eggs organic, carrots organic, and lettuce organic. And the other stuff it doesn't matter as much as those those like because your eggs will you know obviously, and if they're trying to make a field organic, they plant carrots and lettuce, which sucks up a lot of the toxins from the soil. So you don't want um, lettuce and carrots, you know, uh, they need to be organic really. Okay, um, I love the grappling. Yeah, I love grappling, uh, especially grappling suited for MMA. Um, have you got a favourite submission? Or a go-to submission. Do, do you know what? 
To take over the world in grappling, all you need is three good submissions. If you know three good submissions, you can take over the world. I, I do. agree I like, with you. 100%. Yeah, I like the triangle. I like the arm bar. I like the knee bar. You know, so yeah, I like the knee bar. I catch that a lot. I catch that a lot on black belts. Yeah, I catch that. A lot. I was out in LA actually, and I caught a few guys in the knee bar. <laughs> it's funny. I went out to LA, and I was sparring with a guy, and. I stuck out my hand and said to him, my name's Mustafa. He looks at me, he goes to me, my name's Mustafa. So it's fun. I fly all the way to LA to get tapped out by a guy called Mus. <laughs> it was great. It was great. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. It was great. I loved LA. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. obviously, yeah, you, you've been all over the place mm. training and competing. Mm. Um, pick a couple of highlights. Yeah. Either training. Uh, meeting or uh, fighting, competing, or a couple of highlights throughout your really, career. Really, the, hi the, the highlights for, for any good fighter. Great moments you remember. Yeah, the highlights for any good fighter, really, you learn the most from your losses. You learn the most from your losses, but don't dwell on them. See them for what they are. As long as you haven't mugged yourself off, don't dwell on them. The losses have taught me the biggest lessons. Biggest lessons. But the highlight, obviously, winning the British title and and um, winning Abu Dhabi, that was also good. And you know, you know, fighting in the UFC is also great. So many, many, yeah, quite a many few highlights. Yeah, yeah, many highlights. But the most, the most, the biggest lessons are from my losses. Yeah, you know, biggest lessons. You know, it's how you come back from them. Yeah, how you come back from what? How you but they, they you show you a lot. Yeah, they, yeah. they show you a hell of a lot. A win is great. Don't get me wrong. A win is great. Yeah. But what can you learn from a win? You can learn that you can win. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's important. Mm. Yeah. It's really is vital. So many people take a defeat or a loss, and then uh, and it's almost the end of them. Mm. You know, uh, mm. they, they, they don't take nothing from it. They don't learn from the mistakes and come back and improve. You yeah. should always improve. I mean. If you're taking your session seriously, you should always pick, have something in mind specific that you want to work on, and then write it down, and then work on it, and then go back to the drawing room and say, what did I learn? What did I do today? Did I do it properly? Did I not do it properly? What? How can I improve it? How can I? So you've got to keep thinking about it, not only subconsciously but consciously as well, so you can program yourself, because 95% of your 95% of your days on the subconscious. And there's only 5% in the day where you're conscious, so, you know. A couple of things I'm always telling my guys and, and the youngsters and the kids, and even some of the older fighters as well, um, a, cu a couple of basic things is always work on the fundamentals. You can never work them, drill them no, enough. you can't. Um, you can't. Yeah, uh, That's where it's at, the yeah. basics. And hard work and consistency. For me, those are the keys. That's what I keep telling people over and over again, including the kids here, especially the kids. Consistency is so uh, important. Yeah. Um, so what, what would you say, uh, uh, a, key, a couple of key things that you would say? Exactly similar? what you say, yeah. you, know, you know, hard work, persistence, perseverance, you know, and just enjoy it. Yeah. If you're not enjoying yourself, yeah. you're, you're not doing the right martial art. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're doing a martial art, it's boring you or you're not doing the right one. Mm. You're not doing the right one. So just enjoy it. It's the main thing. If you enjoy it, then everything will come. Yeah. And the side effect is you feel happy. Yeah. Side effect is your body looks wicked. Yeah. Side effect is people respect you. It's not a bad thing, is it? No, no. not at all. No. So, just like most people, uh, I'm sure you've had your ups and downs. Uh, it's part of life. Mm -hmm. It's part of the journey, mm -hmm. in particular in the fight game as well. So, um, I, I'm, I'm sure you haven't been immune to the, the low no, points. No, no. And... Um, when you have found yourself down, up against it, whether it be in the career or in life, uh, what have you done or, or what has helped you or inspired you to work your way back up? I think I've always been into words, always been into words. So one of the first things that I looked up when I turned pro is I looked at the word professional. I actually looked it up in a dictionary. I looked it up in a number of different dictionaries. And one definition a professional is no emotional hindrance. You can't let emotions get in the way of what you're trying to do because emotions will hold you back. Emotions will cut your intelligence by half. Emotions will cloud your thinking. This is why, for me, the worst thing is injuries. It would put me on a tilt, but I'd have to say, right, okay, how can I work around this? 
How can I, how can I, how can I do some work uh, without aggravating this injury? And the only way to do to do that is to have a clear thought pattern. Have a ha, m make sure that, that that your thinking is 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 not tainted by emotions, because your emotions will slow you down. Emotions. There's two kinds of fighters. There's there's, there's the real smart ones. And the real thick ones, mm -hmm. and they both they're both as good as each other, yeah. but on opposite side of the spectrum. Yeah. These are the good the good guys. So really, guy, really, really, you have to you have to take a professional attitude, and you have to think, okay, I can't let this get in my way. I've got something I've got something that, that I need to do, and I can't be distracted. Just have tunnel vision, and have a professional attitude. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was uh, just actually just the other night. Uh, I was speaking to one of my younger uh, guys who um, he sort of lost his way a little bit and um, you know I'm asking him what's going on and uh, he was just clutching at straws he, he was making ex excuses excuse after excuse he was saying it was this it was that it was this this is going on that's going on and uh, just pointing the fingers at everyone else blaming everyone else and I'm going look um, if, uh, and he, he, he keeps he kept looking for a reason it was almost as if he's looking for a reason to uh, pull away. Mm. And uh, I go, look, you, you can't make excuses. Uh, you need to find a reason to make, you need to find a way to make things work. Mm. You can't keep looking at excuses. You can't keep picking at excuses and reasons why things aren't working. Mm. Make it work. Mm. If you want to make it to the top, if you want to do well, um, if you want to make progress, you, you've got to find to make things work. Mm. When I was growing up, um, we had no facilities anywhere. No. Yeah, it, it was harsh. I mean, even now today, you know, it, it, not everyone has got great access to great no, facilities. No. And, uh, you know, it's expensive to train. Um, when I was growing up, it, it, times were harsh. There were, yeah. We didn't have the money. There weren't many facilities. Uh, there, uh, there weren't places around. And uh, when I was a kid, a couple of us, we used to walk for miles and mi miles and miles on end uh, to get somewhere just to get to a class. Yeah, or just whatever. to get, go somewhere to hit a bag. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And uh, that's how bad it was. And, um, you know, today uh, we've got these amazing facilities um, and, you know, better facilities are popping up everywhere and we've, we've got amongst the best in the country, if not the best. And, um, you know, uh, I just feel that, uh, you know, uh, the kids, the youngsters, they, they should be grasping both hands. I feel parents should be pushing, They should, they should be grasping. And I, I, well, I've got this problem back home in London. They think that youth lasts forever and it doesn't. No. You get older. Yeah. You get older. <laughs> And uh, they think opportunities are going to last forever. Yeah. But as, as you get older, what the young don't realise is your opportunities get narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower. So you know this is a problem that I've got. I've got back back in London. Yeah. You know, trying to get these kids off of the streets, <clears throat> trying to make them realise that they've got a talent. They've got a small window of opportunity to, to do something. As they get older, it becomes less and less. Yeah. <coughs> there was um, another thing is um, what. You know, which I always say to people as well, uh, and to parents, um, is that you know, uh, most parents from a very young age learn teach their kids to ride a bike, Te take them to swimming lessons. You know, they think oh, it's important. I mean, in today's day and age, if a young kid uh, doesn't know how to ride a bike, people would frown at them mm. like, well, mm. what your parents never taught you how to ride a bike. Mm. But yet they don't have that same philosophy no, yeah, when it no, comes to martial arts and no, self-defense no. and keeping themselves healthy and fit. No. To me, that's just puzzling. I'm sure it is to you as it's well. It's very puzzling yeah. because, you know, my son's 12 years old. He knows how to handle himself. Yeah. It's going to make him alpha. Yeah. As he's growing up, he's not going to be one of those boys yeah. that's going to be oh, scared. No, he's not scared. Yeah. He's going to be one of the guys that stands up and says, well, okay, what? And that's going to aid him throughout his life. Yeah. He's going to have that alpha attitude yeah. as he grows up. And into manhood, yeah. he's not going to think one day, oh, I need to develop it. Yeah. He's already going to have it. Yeah. Think of it, you know, the quicker you adapt, the better. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, true intelligence is what adaptation to the environment. So, yeah, surely, yeah. surely, uh, fit, health, fitness, uh, well being, uh, being able to defend yourself, uh, learning to defend yourself early on, um, and learning the disciplines we do um, in martial arts are more important than learning to ride a bike absolutely you know? absolutely it's a life skill yeah it's a life skill riding a bike okay you know swimming okay yeah swimming could save your life it's a life skill you know but it's a life skill and it's something that becomes 
part of you is something that becomes part of your character yeah. and people define you by that and it's so important yeah. because it's a very big pillar of my character anyway yeah. I'm sure yours as well yeah, absolutely yeah yeah I wish we I had these facilities when I was uh, a young kid wish yeah we I could only wish. go over the park and kick the crap out of each other <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In the summertime, so, yeah, yeah, we don't want to get in the yeah, snow. Yeah. Really. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, could only dream of having these mm. type of facilities and having uh, friendly coaches and, mm. and teams to help you along the way. And uh, you know, uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, people need to get involved. People need to uh, get their kids. It's everyone so in this day and age, everyone, every child should know how to uh, uh, defend themselves. Um, they should be uh, training in martial arts. They should be doing something. Yeah, absolutely. They should be doing something. It's vital. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, oh man. Oh, well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking pleasure to, to you. Pleasure to be here, bro. Really yeah. nice atmosphere. Great gym. Great people. It was my pleasure. Uh, it, it was an honour to have you here. Help us with, help out with the several classes today. Everyone loved it. Got the time here, and uh, you're one of the most humblest guys, Thank and you. politest guys I've met. Thank uh, you. Even in, in martial arts, and uh, a true martial artist, uh, uh, to respect respect for others, uh, humble. I mean, uh, you, you know, this is what martial arts is all about. And Thank having you. you come around today uh, has been an absolute honour, and hopefully we'll see you back here very Thank soon. Thank you. Well. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you.